Good morning, everyone. The peace of the Lord be with you this morning. It is a lovely cold morning, and we trust that it invigorates you. I enjoyed it. I have Andrew pause, so I get a bit of hot flushes, and so this looks perfectly well for me. So we celebrate in this morning, and as we do, I invite us to pray. I have lit the um, peace, um, hope, and justice candle, and so let us pray. Almighty God, as we move toward the end of a long, cold, dry winter, we hear with gratitude the words of Jesus. Whoever drinks of the water that I will give you will never be thirsty. As your word is preached across our land this week, we pray that it may bring living water into hearts and minds that are weary. Weary of COVID, weary of poverty and hunger, weary of dishonesty and greed. Weary of conflicts that lead death and destruction in their wake. Draw people back into your churches, where they can again connect deeply with you and with fellow Christ followers. May your voice be heard in the places of conflict. Enable your church to lead the way to reconciliation in broken communities. Establish your lasting peace in our land. Replace anger with love. That violence may forever be abandoned as a way of dealing with difference and discord. Oh God, guide us that we may drink deeply from your living water and find new life and hope and strength. And then lead us, that we may share your living water with those who are dispirited and hopeless. Let your living water flow through and transform our land. Amen. Friends, our notices for the week are as follows. Just to say that we are back and we are open and um, we are praying for all those that are unable to be here. I've had a few messages this morning for the first time. Folks say, I'm feeling a little bit coffee um, and I thought, mm, that sounds like tea, you know, so, um, and I immediately said, please stay home and stay warm. So our prayers are with all those that are coughing and are not feeling great. Um, and then just to say that um, birthdays this week is Trevor Beer and Martin Hopkins on the 16th. Then on the 18th, we've got Nelly Siwet Lamini and Noe Mfabana. And then anniversaries, Dennis and Joan Brown. And so that's on the 20th. If you could either give them a call or just connect with them on those days. Um, then just in terms of prayers for our church, we have started our theme prayers um, weekly, um, and the 11 o'clock group is leading that for us. Um, you are encouraged to participate either by joining in or by having silent prayer. We're having different themes for different days. This past week, it was about COVID, it was about wellness and it was about prayer for um, leaders in South Africa and our political situations and so we will alert you during this week and we pray at 9 p.m every night and please tune in to those prayers then just our soup kitchen our soup kitchen is still open and they are one of our stewards is in there this morning and they are making sure that we are feeding 140 people um, three times a week now, and just to say thank you to those that have responded um, and have given the vegetables that we so have asked of you, may God bless you for that, 
then just special prayers I would ask of you to look at your bulletin and to just pray through those special prayers and our prayers this week we do this alphabetically and we with the T families the Tzatzas, uh, the Shabbaseles, the Shabalalas, the flock and the Mudra families will we keep them in prayer um, this week. Our bank account is in need of visitations. So if you could stop at, um, what is that, at Stack at, at, at First National Bank and uh, pop in and um, flip in there. We do take collections. Uh, but we'll take a real collection so that it's not a small amount so that it can set off the bank charges. Um, so please give generously. And um, those are our announcements. We take up your free will offering now and we trust we give generously towards the work of God. Connections and we sing the doxology. Our doxology this morning is praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs>
that we can bring before you. We pray for all those that are not feeling well today, and we ask that you touch them with your anointing. We ask that you be Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides, and that in all these places, oh God, we may bring you praises. This we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. To give us a bit of purpose, um, can you do this? <laughs> to give us a bit of purpose, we sing together, we have come into the space, gathered in his name to worship you. Give us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn, as we worship God, is entitled Father in Heaven, How We Love You. Father in Heaven, How We Love You.
or of what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, there is the idea of fullness as in a glass being filled to the brim and overflowing. So imagine a glass and imagine you're not looking and you're pouring and you're pouring without stopping. That's the idea of the Holy Spirit. Not to get to a place where you pour just enough. Now I know great etiquette says that a finger space from the top is where you fill it up to. Some countries say two finger spaces, but never a glass full. The church and the apostles say, when we speak of the Holy Spirit and the gift thereof, pour until it overflows. Have you ever had that moment where you poured and you didn't look and it just... It's that expression. That's how God wants us to be filled up with the Spirit. The second idea is the idea of wind filling sails. Have you ever sailed? So when wind allows the sails to have volume, the sailing ship is moved along by the wind when it fills the sails and pushes the ship forward. So imagine that something that you can't see, sometimes you hear it. I think I've heard it of late because I don't know what besought me to create um, wind barriers on the pergola at the manse. And so I haven't fastened them quite well, Mr. Trust property. And so when this wind now moves, I hear this and like, <laughs> and, and, and so it, it reminds me, I can't see it, but I know it's there because the effects are seen in the things around me. And it can drive the most heavy thing into movement. The third idea that the gift of the Holy Spirit brings is like permeation. Now, I don't want to use permeation as aroma from those things that we place in our house. I want to use that idea. I want to use the permeation from the idea of a barbecue and of preparing the meat the day before. And we prepare that, and I'm going to use a simple thing, taking salt and putting it on the piece of steak and just allowing it to sit and to get into that piece of meat. And so when that happens, it preserves that meat, but it also creates flavor to it, right? And so that's the idea that the text is wanting us to see. The fourth one, uh, another meaning being, being filled is being totally controlled as in a person who is filled with some emotion and that then controls them. For instance, a person filled with anger as in Luke 6 verse 11 or a person filled with sorrow as in John 16 verse 6 or a person filled with fear. I think that's an emotion we're all familiar with at the moment as in Luke 5.26. And that all those things is something that is controlled by emotion. And so, therefore, says to us, if the Spirit fills us, then the Spirit must control us to bring something up within us. To be filled with the Spirit is to be under God's control. This is brought out clearly by the contrast formats. Do not get drunk with wine. And I think often people who don't drink wine says the Bible says they don't drink seedly. And it doesn't actually have that connotation. The connotation that it has is the following. A person who is drunk is someone who has lost control. So just sit there of their mental and physical abilities due to the influence of the alcohol they have consumed. The greater the influence of the alcohol, the less control they have. The mental ability is diminished, the speech is slithered, and the coordination 
is declined. So what does that text really say? The text simply says, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, stay in control. Don't be out of control. Speak that others can hear you. You know, have you ever been sloshed like that? I've not tried, but I would like to try. But I would need a safety net around me to just... Um, because I think um, I was counseling someone and says, you know what? Um, he, he, was, he was using it as an example and he says, you know, we can control people by the way we want them to believe about us. And he says, sometimes I want people to believe that I'm wrong and it's in a certain big language. And I just looked at him and I thought, I've seen you do that. And he said, I never dream of that. Now I created that sometimes people can think I'm wrong. And you have no idea how much I hear from you. But it's all about being in touch with self. And that's the gift that the Spirit brings to us. Not saying, you know, I've now had way too much and I can let my head hang loose. Again, take note that the command is not optional for Christians. To resist the filling of the Spirit is to be blatant in, uh, in disobedience to, and to minimize its importance is to be in rebellion against the will of God. The third thing that I want to speak about is the evidence of being filled with the Spirit is having the fruit of the Spirit. And you know what the fruit of the Spirit is. The fruit of the Spirit says it's love, it's joy, it's patience, it's kindness, it's goodness, it's faithfulness, it's gentleness and self-control. Sometimes I, I listen to people and I interact with people and I want to answer. And then I think, oh, thank you, Lord, you've put a little watchman here. Because if I had said it, it would not be kind. And so those are ways by which we can do check-ins with ourselves. How do we accomplish the filling of the Holy Spirit? The filling of the Holy Spirit is in the verb which is passive. It is something that God does in us. And he will do so in the, in the Christian as long as you do that, as we don't grieve the Holy Spirit. When we already talk about the Holy Spirit in, in the way that Ephesians 4 verse 30 speaks about it, when we resist, when we grieve, when we stubbornly refuse, you know, when we say that I'm not going to be kind, I'm done with being kind, then we're not doing the will of God. To be filled with the Spirit um, means that we pray to God to do it, because it's not something that we can do. And our natural inclinations is to be reactive. Our natural inclinations is to be, is to be on the attack and to, and to protect ourselves and to defend our ideas. And what the Spirit of God does is that the Spirit of God allows us to do the things that we cannot normally do. The greatest evidence of this um, life of faith and being filled with the Spirit are the changes made in our hearts toward God and exhibited in the praise of God. What does that mean? Well, it all, which Paul has already talked about, walking worthy of your calling in humility, in gentleness, in patience, and in love, fulfilling your role in your body by using the spiritual gifts to build up one another, walking in a renewed sense of mind, being selfless and considerate of others in your dealings with them, imitating God in love, walking as children of light, and by living with wisdom. But in the church, how do we do that? How do we do that? It says it's evident in music. And that's odd, because I thought, I've been trying to say to people, um, as people are self-isolating, I've been trying to tell them, listen to music, do this, read, you know, engage. And I'm reading this this week, and I'm seeing the affirmation of that. Because when it speaks of music, it says one of the most thrilling aspects that what Paul says here about music is that there is no mention about the quality. Do you see that? 
Sometimes we wanted to be perfect. Sometimes we wanted to come with gusto. Doesn't say that at all. Every believer is to be involved in this. So it's not just whether we have uh, Jonathan or Carol or Vivian here, it's how we engage it as we sit here. And sometimes as we stand. Every believer needs to be involved. Even if you cannot carry a tune in a bucket, you can make music that pleases God because he looks at the heart. So we ask the question, can you sing? And many of us would say, I cannot sing to save my soul. The essence is that God really wants to hear that off note of yours. I mean, I stand here and I know I haven't got the gift of singing. But I sing because it's not for you. I sing for the glory of God. And it's the expression of my heart that God is wanting me to have. And it's that obedience that I bring. It's a little bit like standing in the shower. Anyone here that sings in the shower? I think if people would listen to you singing in the shower, they would be horrified sometimes. But you sing nonetheless, almost as if you echo the words of singing in the rain, simply because the water falls. But it's all for the glory of God. It's making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Certainly, there are all aspects of trained musicians that make beautiful sounds unto the Lord as detailed in temple worship. The music of believers is focused on God. And therefore done in, in, in edification of one another. Part of our celebration of worship and therefore not, is not really to be evangelistic. Though God may use words of songs to have to move and be this. So therefore we ask the question, what are the elements that are different in music? The elements in music is actually speaking. And you listen to people when they want to give excuse for not singing, they say, no, I can't sing, I speak. Well, I have news for you. Singing is actually just that, because the word is la leo, like a child that begins to say la, la, la. And so what music is asking for you to do is to just open your mouth. Ever been in that space when you have done wrong and your parents says, answer? And then when you don't answer, they say, open your mouth. You know, and I know because I'm so terrified at all, I didn't want anything bad to happen. I just go, and she said, I said, open your mouth. And I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm just wondering, I'm wondering whether that's the expression of putting on the hips. Have you ever done putting on the hips? Um, where you sing, but you're not really singing, you're just moving your lips. <laughs> so imagine if we just do that. And in that space, we just, we just blurt out all the sounds that are not so in tune. I've seen many of these, what do they call it, YouTube things. And I've seen where they're singing, and it really sounds great. And then I see the little brother coming and pulling out the sound box. And suddenly I hear the real voice, and I mean, ooh, that was bad. But in church, God invites us to all of that bad because the praise is unto God. Psalms magnify God primarily by focus on the nature and work of God, especially in the relation to the life of a believer. A modern psalm would be something like worship the king. Do you remember that one in the old hymn? How does it go? Yeah, you know the words I want the song, the sound. How loud does it sound? You go, Tony. That's exactly it. So imagine if we had that confidence, that confidence that bring us into a space where it's all about God. It's all about God. Hymns. Center more on songs of praise and differ from psalms 
only even that they specifically praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We see in Colossians 1 verse 12 to 16 um, that hymns are used in a manner that says um, something like, worthy is the Lamb. And really speak, and that's the essence of why hymns were written. Psalms for one purpose, hymns for another purpose. And then the spiritual songs, spiritual songs that speak of testimony, speak of testimony, and the testimony in spiritual songs would be something like, he touched me, oh, he touched me, and all the joy that floods my soul. Do you remember that? Before your time. Or a spiritual song could be, when we all get to heaven, what a thing it would be. You know that one? I lost the words, but I had the tune. The expression of our music is both through voice and the musical instruments. Singing simply means to sing with a voice. You may sing well, you may sing poorly, but God wants you to sing. It is to be part of your worship to Him. Melody comes from the word salio and means specifically to pluck on a stringed instrument, especially a, a, a hand harp. In today's language, we would call that a guitar. Um, and those are um, the melodies that bring our music is to be expressed to one another in private and always to the Lord, but also in public. It is evident in our thanksgiving. So in our thanksgiving, we ask the question this morning, whether we understand that our thanksgiving is the mark of salvation. We do not give thanks to things we think we deserve. The human heart invariably think it merits good things. Giving thanks for all things is demonstrations that a person has come to humility and is fully in spirit and that they in reality deserve nothing. Thanksgiving is the mark of wisdom. Thanksgiving is the mark of maturity. Thanksgiving is the mark of worship. A thankful heart cannot exist apart from worship of the spirit in the life of the individual. People may say thank you about a common courtesy or because they are genuinely moved by some special gift. But to be thankful in all things, the individual must be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think in these very trying times, in these moments of fear of COVID, we can still be thankful. We can be thankful that we are here this morning. We can be thankful that we braved the cold. And in braving the cold, we became part of a community and we come to give each other of ourselves. And as we give of ourselves, is that not the spirit of God? I think I would have a great time listening to a bunch of voices that sang false or off key and still walk out and say, that was such a spiritual moment. Friends, as I conclude, the Spirit of God is evident in our mutual submission. A new created being filled with the Spirit is in submission to God and therefore will have a submission to others that belong to God. Submission is not obedience, for it is done willingly. Obedience is done out of compulsion. Believers' lives are to be marked by this. A genuine Christian is a radically changed creature. One of the radical changes in our lives is the desire to have God control us. We are to be filled with the Spirit, striving to submit to Him in all areas. As we do, He turns in turn, empowers us to fulfill his will. So as we worship God today, as we move into the last king, just need to find it. And as we come to understand and reflect, let's sing there's a quiet understanding when we gathered in the spirit.
It's a promise that he gives us when we gather in his name. fill us with your spirit. Thank you for that water which makes us thirst no more. Thank you, God, that your spirit still allows us to hold control, but then to submit that you may control. Thank you, Jesus, for this family called Park Town North. Thank you that we meet to bring you praises and bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Friends, we sing the benediction together. Now unto him who is able to do. Go in peace and may the peace of God go with you. Amen. Amen.